This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, a new animated fantasy comedy directed by, well, Guillermo del Toro, but also Mark Gustafsson. In this adaptation of the original fairy tale, and a hell of a departure from the usual depictions of the story, we begin with the carpenter Geppetto having lost his son, Carlo, entering a deep grief and building a new son out of wood. A spirit of a nearby forest takes pity on him, bringing the wooden child to life and entrusting a cricket who had been living inside him to guide Pinocchio on the right path. However, this is a frustrating path, which includes disobedience, a traveling circus, children being drafted into the war, the stakes of immortality, and, most of all, coming to terms with the loss of loved ones, and perhaps the inevitability of the loss of others as well. That's pretty heavy, yes, but the movie is rather dense in its story and the various ideas that are developed over time. Everything that occurs has some underlying connection to one of these themes, and nothing that happens feels particularly wasteful because of these ties. What's more is that this not only makes the story an ongoing adventure for Pinocchio, but an examination of three different sorts of father figures, all of whom are exploiting him for their own personal goals, though obviously one has a bit more of a humanistic angle compared to the morally corrupt desires of the others. It's actually a bit surprising how the movie doesn't pull any punches within its world, with death itself being a very strong story element, and a driving force within Pinocchio's character and his personal arc. The movie is primarily from his perspective, as well as Geppetto's, which does leave other characters a bit underdeveloped, but they are at least unique enough in personality and performance that they don't need very large arcs. Though it is probably worth noting that the development that we do get for characters isn't exactly advanced or intricate. All in all, the story is still one which was made for children, so while its topics are much more unusual for what might be considered a kid's story, they are treated in a manner that makes it clear to anybody how impactful they are through the resulting emotional stakes that come to resonate within the characters. The movie's visual production is definitely a highlight, and hopefully a primary reason why people would be interested in the movie in the first place. The entire film is animated in stop motion, not only creating consistency between the fantastical and realistic elements of the world, but allowing the storybook-like art design to better display more style and expression within the settings and character designs. There is indeed a nice uniqueness within various locations, but only occasionally does it really take a step up and use the environment as part of the visual storytelling, though it is very effective when it does so, pushing Pinocchio and others into a truly new world. Otherwise, color and lighting are where the attention seems to be placed, giving warmth or coldness to scenes and balancing characters against them pretty well and most especially creating a nice amount of atmosphere. On the technical end of things, cinematography is put to good use, especially when it comes to framing and motion, with a rather impressive amount of scale and depth coming through what is already a miniaturized medium, making these settings truly feel larger than they actually are. Ultimately, this art direction is not only able to create a truly unique world that is simultaneously real and unreal, but it almost seems to contrast the story's greater themes, 
as though they exist underneath the surface of something more innocent or unaware. I mean, they obviously do, but it would also seem that the movie's greater conclusion is that with a genuine and unconditional sense of love and goodness, it is possible to overcome and work through such hardships. I mean, the movie explains it a lot better than I can. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio Guillermo del Toro, Mark Gustafson, 2022 Four and a half stars. I definitely recommend giving it a watch. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. I thought I'd have more to say, but this really is a movie that speaks for itself. Either that, or I'm starting to get burned out. Uh, no, that's too depressing. I'm going with the first one.